in module one, video one, we went over AI basics and why the frenzy over AI is happening now. In this video, we'll go over large language models, what they are and the controversies surrounding them. A large language model is comprised of gigantic swaths of information scraped from the internet for machines to train on. Part of the issue with LLMs is that it's unclear what they are trained on and how it derives the answers. Those two things for, journal for many journalists are non-starters for using them. Journalists need to confirm sources, and none of the models built today offer that transparency. Large language models, or LLMs, are the backbone of a tool like ChatGPT. At the beginning of the year, building an LLM seemed only possible by the six technology companies because of the computing power and expertise required. But in March, Llama, which is Meta's LLM, was leaked and developers created Llama models that could run on a laptop and even a smartphone. To get even nerdier, researchers have run pre-training experiments to address size and accuracy issues by using a technique called sparse quantized representation, which enables a near lossless compression of LLMs. The open source and research communities brought down the computing size required to run and train LLMs in a span of four months. A Google employee wrote a now leaked memo that claims the open source community, eager and more agile, is poised to lap big tech in the LLM race. Recent research about model collapse is an intriguing development for news organizations. Model collapse is when LLMs are trained on other AI-created content, and then the quality begins to erode and the model collapses, sort of like a photocopy of a printed photo. Fresh, human-created data can better assure the integrity of an LLM. Human-created data, at least for now, might be more valuable than we've imagined. The size of LLMs have been brought down to fit on a laptop and even a smartphone, and we haven't hit the endpoint yet. Many in the field of AI see companies as having their own LLMs in the next two years, and for people to have individual LLMs within the next three years. Now, those are rough estimates, and so far, AI development has surpassed all expectations, so expect those timelines to shrink. There are several problematic topics around LLMs. There are many legal and IP issues that surround LLMs. There are several lawsuits by image creators like Getty and celebrities whose work has been ingested without compensation. It will likely take years for the copyright issues to be resolved. There's also inherent bias in the training data of LLMs. The language models have scraped Reddit, where 67% of users are men. They've scraped Wikipedia, where fewer than 15% of contributors are women or girls. Limited parts of humanity in, even more limited extractions of humanity out. As the language models work on machine learning, and when machine learning begins to see a pattern, it can double down. So bias will create more bias. Disability consultant and influencer Jeremy Andrew Davis created this prompt in the image creation tool Midjourney. Autistic person, lifelike, photo real, photojournalism. Midjourney rendered 148 images with the following results. Female representing, rep, uh, presenting people were created twice. People older than, than 30 were created five times. All 148 images were white and none of them smiled. This is a problem for reinforcing stereotypes of all kinds, and this is just one example. There are environmental strains also with LLMs due to the amount of energy that computers uh, to train require and the water it consumes to cool the computers. Researchers at the University of Massachusetts have estimated that training an LLM produced more than five times the lifetime carbon emissions from the average car. Then for LLMs, there's the widening wealth disparity. Only 15 cities in the United States account for two thirds of all AI work, according to Brookings Fellows, Mark Moreau and, and Sifan Liu. And that's just in the US looking at one branch of work that is affected by AI. AI is, will impact most jobs in all corners of the globe. Questions of IP, bias, the environmental strain, and wealth disparities are important facets that come with AI, and I want to address this up front. I am not a tech utopian. I'm a tech pragmatist. The technology is here, and it's up to us to figure out together 
if we understand the technology, we can call for better standards in licensing reliable and representative training data. We can decrease the environmental strain and wealth disparities. I'll close with some tips on using chatbots to the best of their abilities. There are two components to a tool like ChatGPT, language and knowledge. Use its language capabilities. Don't ask it to write a story for you, but do enter your story, making sure that it's not a scoop-sensitive story, and ask it to write headlines, summarize it, turn it into a broadcast script. Nothing should go directly to publish without human oversight. Some newsrooms have said no one should experiment with ChatGPT, but that's unrealistic and unwise. Journalists are smart, curious people who are engaged with the world. They are likely already using these tools. The question is, how can we track those experiments and develop better approaches to using AI? You'll want to also define your newsroom standards and know they will evolve as the technology advances. I've mentioned tools here and it reminds me of a message sent during our webinar that the chatbot tool Claude isn't available in Latin America. Let's discuss that. What tools do you have access to? Which ones are blocked? Was this a decision by your government or by the company that created the tool?